Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we will be working on the Tiger Tank. I've been filming this in bits during the week between other things, so it might not be as coherent as usual. Hopefully it will hang together okay though. Okay, first job. With the Tajan chassis quick release, you have to unplug the air intake hoses every time you want to get inside. A bit of a pain, and eventually those hoses are going to give up. The air filter housings are held on with two screws, and the housing itself is in two halves held together with another self-tapper. Inside, the pipework has flanged ends that fit neatly into a slot so it can spin freely without falling out. After a bit of thought and a rummage through the junk box, I came up with a little mod. Here we have one of the air filters from the stock Henglong chassis. It's a direct swap with the Tajan one. From the outside, it looks completely stock, but inside, it's a little bit different. The flanged ends are now glued in, and the pipes are held in with rather powerful neodymium magnets. They can still rotate to find their position, but it means the upper hull can lift straight off without having to bend the hoses around every time. Much better. Next we're going to tackle the exhausts. With the smoke on they should come out from the hole in the top of the, uh, well, I guess they're mufflers of some sort, but because of the design and the smoke tending to take the path of least resistance, most of the smoke comes from the bottom, which isn't great. The problem is the muffler is completely open on one side. Unfortunately Tajan decided to glue the muffler to the armour so we can't take them apart, but you can just about see the opening. It runs all the way to the top. No wonder the smoke doesn't go where it should. Luckily, the stock Henglong parts are identical to the Tajan ones, and also rather luckily, Henglong didn't glue them together. With the armour removed, you can now see the neoprene tube that runs all the way to the hole in the top. Pretty simple. The hardest part was getting the tube around the tight bend without kinking it. They fit just like the stock ones, two screws each, and the tubes get hooked up to the smoker. From the outside, there's no difference to stock, except all the smoke comes out of the top. Nice. There's a slight issue though. The extra resistance in a longer tube means the smoker is struggling a little bit to pump the smoke out, but we might be able to modify it with some sort of flap valve to keep the smoke moving. Now then, I'm trying to build up this tank to be a runner, and I can't help thinking those spare track segments on the front are going to get hung up on just about everything, so they're going to have to go. We're still going to need some spares though, so we've got some turret mounted ones. From the pics of the real Tigers I've looked at, having five on one side and two on the other was quite a common setup. They'll need some holes drilling in the turret for mounting, but that's going to be simple enough. For the back we've got a couple of metal mud flaps, not strictly necessary, but as I managed to break the plastic ones already, I thought, why not? Another bit for the front, some extra armour for the transmission, which also comes with an armoured engine cover. I figured since we were removing the spare tracks from the front, they'll add a little bit of extra detail to make up for it. I'm not going to use the engine cover plate, it replaces a lot of the air intake pipe work. Good for not getting important bits blown off the tank, but I rather like the busyness of the early Tigers. It's probably not a period correct collection of bits, but I like it. Right then, time to get the bits ready for some paint. The upper hull accessories all need to come off, all the plastic parts and the metal tools. All the wiring needs to get unplugged and the turret needs to be separated. Since we had to drill some new holes for the metal tools, we need to mark the holes we need to fill. Flip it over and stick some tape behind them. You might be better off taping the top surface and filling from the bottom if you want a quick smooth finish, but I'm more interested in just blocking up the holes and it will be easier applying the filler from the top. We'd also need to remove the hose clamps and the hoses from the back. On the chassis, you can just about get at the screws that hold the spare tracks in place. It would be easier if the gearboxes were removed, but you can just about get enough grip on the screws with them in place. The chassis sides need to be cleared, the radio can go under the battery strap, and the speaker needs to get peeled off and unplugged. The tracks need to come off too. Basically anything that can be removed gets removed, until we end up with pretty much a bare chassis. We need to fill the holes in the front. The easiest method is to tape over the outside face, stand the chassis up so the face is level, mix up some 5 minute epoxy and carefully fill up the holes making sure you don't get any in the gears. The epoxy will settle in the hole making a nice plug. Leave it for a good hour or two before peeling off the tape. The trick is to be absolutely sure it's rock hard or when you peel off the tape it will distort leaving a little lump. For the small holes in the upper hull, I'm going to use some good old Isopon, which is pretty much the same as Bondo. It's a flexible car body filler. 
if you've ever bought an old full-size car, the chances are the body's made up mostly of this stuff. Mix them up and pop a blob on each of the holes, pressing it in. Remove the excess and leave it to harden. It's going to shrink a little bit, so if you want a quick smooth finish, you're going to need to apply it from the inside just like the front of the chassis. But I figure the holes will mostly be covered up by the metal tools, and the tanks never had a perfect finish anyway, so a little roughness won't hurt. The screw head might be a little bit of a problem though. It will need another smear of filler and a bit of a sand before we paint it. Some time later now, and we can remove the tape on the front of the chassis. The epoxy has fully hardened, so it should come away cleanly. If the epoxy seems to come away with the tape, stick it back down and leave it a bit longer. Once it's painted, they'll all but disappear. We can fit the transmission armour now. Some medium Sino will do the job. We don't want to use thin, as it's probably going to find its way into the chassis, and might just gum up the gearboxes. The back plate can come off, so we can paint it. Just the two screws, being very careful not to lose any of the release lever parts. The bottom of the hull still has its protective plastic on the aluminium chassis. To remove it, just loosen all the screws a little bit and peel it off. It's going to get painted with the rest of it, and the chances are it's going to get scratched up in no time. But it'll still look far better than the blue plastic. And don't forget to tighten all the screws back up. The output shafts of the gearbox need to be masked. Make a tube of tape, pop it over the shaft, stick it down and trim off the excess. It would be better to remove the gearboxes entirely, but the tape will do the job well enough. All the other holes and openings need to get blocked up with some tape too. When we paint, we don't want to get any on the internal components. Of course, we need to cover the chassis as well. A bit of scrap paper and some more tape will do the trick. The front is a bit more tricky. We need to protect the gearboxes, but the front lip needs to be painted. It's a bit of a fiddle getting it all stuck down, but not impossible. We need to do something similar with the top hull. The hatch holes and the turret hole need to be covered from the inside. Check everything twice, make sure anything you don't want painted is masked, and when you're completely happy, get the spray cans out. Well, I didn't film the painting, but it's the usual method. A couple of light coats of grey plastic primer, then with it all one colour, any imperfections will stand out. If there are any you don't like, simply fix them and then apply some more primer. Leave it to dry, with the weather warming up that doesn't take too long. Then start painting the final colour. I use Tamiya German Grey. It's a bit darker than the original Heng Long paint, but I think it looks lovely. Adds to the menacing look of the tiger nicely. As long as you apply thin coats and build up the colour slowly, it's really hard to go wrong. For the painting, I removed all the rubber tyres from the road wheels. It took ages to remove them all. The best bit though, it takes even longer to refit them. Now for the rebuild. We know everything should fit together perfectly because we had it all working before we painted it. So it should all be perfectly straightforward. First the back plate goes on with its release lever, then for the fun bit, all the wheels need to go back on. And since we covered this in the initial build, I'm just going to cut to them all fitted. Next the tracks, which you can just about get on without having to split any of the segments. The inner half of the drive sprocket slots in place, then with the tensioner as loose as it will go, the track will just about go over the pulley, slot the outer half of the sprocket into the track and run it round into position. With a bit of a joggle, it will line up with the inner and it will just drop straight in. Just need to install the screw and do it up. Simple. And of course, it's the same on the other side. OK, we're back to a rolling chassis. Next, we can reinstall all the bits on the back plate. Nothing special, just a whole load of self-tappers. The mud flaps can clip in. The right side one is perfect. The added weight makes it flop down quite nicely. The left one, though, seems to be getting hung up a bit so we might need to have a little bit of a fettle and a repaint, but it'll do for now. The turret can go back onto the upper hull. Well, I didn't show it, but I did mask off the hole in the bottom to protect the BB motor and gearbox from the paint. All the connections from the upper hull need to get reconnected. There's quite a few to do. At some point, I want to add the ability to spin the turret 360 degrees with the addition of a slip ring, and possibly rewire it so it all connects with a single connector. Now, I really wanted to do that before painting, but we can't have everything. The battery can go in too, can be connected, and the upper hull can be clipped into place. The air intake hoses with the magnetic pipes can be refitted with the little clamps. I think we could do with a different material for the hoses. The stock stuff is a little bit stiff. It feels a lot like neoprene. Some silicon tube might be better, or maybe even some good old rubber. Nearly there now, just the spare tracks to go on. 
I've already fitted this side, it was a bit of a fiddle to line everything up. The more segments, the more fiddly it is. On the other side though, I've already got the holes drilled. A bit oversized to allow for a bit of wiggle room. The top mounts just drop into the holes. The segment should lay down flat to the turret with the bottom mount in contact too. To hold them in, I'm going to be using some more 5 minute epoxy. You really don't need a lot. With the track out of the way, put a drop of epoxy on each of the holes. Just enough to block up the hole, but not enough to leave a lump on top. Carefully insert the tracks. If you try and remove them again, there's a fair chance you'll leave a trail of epoxy and ruin the nice paint finish. So get it right first time. Pull the bottom away from the turret and put another spot of epoxy on the bottom mount. And adjust the position until it's spot on. Leave them alone for an hour or so to harden up. Right then, time for the garden patrol. I think it's all looking really rather good. The paint really ties it all together nicely. With the tools painted up and fitted it will look even better. With some weathering I think it will look quite authentic despite the hodgepodge of bits. There's some minor mechanical hiccups. The left track ticks a bit when running in reverse and the upper hull doesn't always clip in properly at the back. With those fixed and the other bits installed I think we're going to be ready to take it to the woods for a run. Should be fun. But then I can't help thinking we really need a Sherman for some authentic David and Goliath tank battles. Anyway, thanks for watching, and do please leave a like if you like the video, and of course if you're not already, by all means hit subscribe, it's free after all. Bye guys!